Hey guys, we're ready for another chapter of Flying Solo. This one's called Kids Rule, 9 a.m. Rachel's silence had changed her in unexpected ways. Without her voice, she had learned how to watch, how to tune in to a million little things she had never before noticed. She saw the little gifts Rhonda and Jasmine gave Karen to compete for her friendship. A few days ago, Rachel spied a secret glance and shy smile between Skye and Vicky, of all people. During math, today she noted Bastion chewing his nails, something he never did. She glanced over at Sean. He had his head down on the desk. She wondered if he was asleep. She took out her book, a beginner's flight manual, and began to read. The bones of birds are hollow but strong. This hollowness helps them to fly. It is interesting to note that airplane wings are mostly empty, filled with nothing but air. So we're starting to see a common theme in this book, which is flight. The name of the book is Flying Solo, and several times throughout the last few chapters, we've seen um, some references to flying. So that's something that Rachel is really interested in, and it's a theme that kind of keeps showing up in the book. Rachel liked this passage so much, she read it again. The words described exactly how she felt. This morning, strong and hollow, filled with air and silence, just itching to fly. Okay, Karen said, flitting into the room. Her eyes were bright, cheeks slightly flushed as if she'd run all the way back. Still no sub, huh? The case of the missing sub, Robert said. Yeah, we're like orphans, Tim cried plaint plaintively. Speak for yourself, Bastion said. I know who my mother is. Karen went to Mr. Fabiano's desk and picked up a folder. Must be the lesson plans Mr. Fab left for the sub, she said. Here's the spelling test. Might as well go that, get that over with, right? Better do something before we die of boredom, Tim muttered. I'll give the spelling words, Jessica said. Why you, Christopher demanded. Because I always get a hundred on spelling tests, Jessica retorted. It was no different from any other spelling test, Rachel thought, as kids groaned and muttered and snapped open binders and pulled out blank sheets of lined paper. Jessica stood in the center of the three tables, slowly reading the words twice and using them in a sentence, just as Mr. Fabiano always did. Perceive. Perceive. Many people perceive professional athletes as rich, spoiled, selfish individuals. Not, Bastion yelled. Quiet, Jessica said. The next word is souvenir. Souvenir. When Christopher went to Disney World, his father bought him a stuffed Mickey Mouse as a souvenir of the trip. Hardy har har, Christopher said. It was 9.30 by the time they had finished the test, handed out the answer key, corrected their answers, compared scores, and written their misspelled words in the back of their writing folders. So what do we do now? Robert asked, slumping in his seat. I'm taking a nap, Bastion announced lying down on the floor. Wake me when somebody shows up, if somebody shows up. Show off, Rhonda said. You wouldn't do that if Mr. Fab was here. This is getting a little freaky, Tim said. Welcome to the Twilight Zone, Christopher put in. Yeah, what's the deal, Vicky asked. She turned to look at Karen. What did they say about the sub when you went to the office? Mm, nothing, Karen said. Nothing? Nope. Karen said, shrugging. They didn't say a thing because I didn't tell them. Bastion sat up. Everyone looked at Karen. Didn't tell them, Rhonda asked. Why not? Don't you guys get it? Karen asked. She leaned forward and snapped her fingers, eyes bright with excitement. There's obviously been some kind of major mix-up. They forgot about us. So, Rhonda said. So I started thinking. Why tell anybody? Karen said. I figured... Let's run the class ourselves. Yes, Christopher said, making a fist. He jumped up and started goose-stepping across the floor. We can do it, Karen said. I know we can. Kids looked around at one another, smiling, giggling nervously. Missy looked over at Rachel. They raised their eyebrows at the exact same time. Very true, Jasmine agreed. I mean, if we can't run this class for one day, we're a total bunch of losers. I'm with you, Jordan said. Me too, said Robert and Corey. Count me in, Bastion said. Kids rule, kids rule, kids rule. Sure, why not, Vicky asked. Why not, Jessica asked. Are you kidding? It's illegal, that's why not. Everybody stared at her. Opinion, Christopher said. Yeah, 
Yeah, are you sure? Karen asked. It's wrong. It's dangerous. Somebody could get hurt, Jessica said, glaring at Karen. Mr. Fab would want us to go down to the office and tell them right now. I can't believe you didn't tell them. Rachel wrote something on a piece of paper and handed it to Missy. Wait a sec, Missy said. Rachel wants to say something. Ah, Bastion said. The silent pilot speaks. Be quiet, Missy told him. She took Rachel's note and read it aloud. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Oh, sure, Jessica said, making a face at Rachel. Sure, Mr. Fab would just love the idea of us being totally unsupervised all day while he's gone. Give me a break. This is the dumbest, stupidest, most asinine idea I've ever heard of. Opinion, Christopher smirked. Missy picked up another note from Rachel and read it aloud. I think Mr. Fabiano would want us to think and talk about it and then decide. He's always talking about moral decisions. I don't believe this, Jessica shook her head. Look, Mr. Fab isn't here, Jasmine pointed out. We have to do what we think is right, right? I'm for it, Skye said quietly. Kids rule, Bastion and Tim chanted. Kids rule, kids rule, kids rule. Shush, Missy said. We should vote. We should not vote, Jessica said, banging her desk. It's the most demented idea I've heard since my sister tried to put the cat in the dryer. What are you worried about, Bastion asked. What could possibly happen? This school is crawling with teachers. Fact, Christopher said. Let's vote and get on with it, Karen said. Who votes we should run the class ourselves today? An instant crop of hands, of raised hands. Who votes no? Jessica stuck her long arm straight up into the air. 14 to one, Karen said. Fact, Christopher grinned and crossed his arms. They all looked at Jessica. Sorry, string bean, looks like you lose, Bastion said. You gonna go squeal? Shut your face, Jessica hissed at him. What I do and when I do it is none of your business. Hey, let's all chill, Jasmine said. For a moment, no one did anything but breathe. Okay, so what next? Vicky asked quietly. Party time, Tim cried. Flash drafts, Missy said, pointing at the schedule printed on the blackboard. Writing. Oh, come on, Bastion moaned. Vicky went over to the tape player. Soon, a mellow jazz began to fill the classroom. Mr. Fab believed in a daily schedule with a few surprises, with as few surprises as possible. Spelling, flash drafts, music slash computer lab, one every other day, math, connections, more writing, lunch, drop everything and read, exploration, science. To keep things predictable, he had certain rituals like playing music during writing time. Rachel hadn't liked the music at first, but with time, she found that it got her in the mood to write and actually helped her concentration. This is stupid, Bastion said. I don't feel like writing. I'm not in the mood. Morning time is writing time, Vicky said, repeating one of Mr. Fabiano's favorite lines. Shut up, shrimp, Bastion muttered. Vicky was the shortest girl in the sixth grade. Hey, that's a put down, Jasmine said, glaring at him. Ooh, Bastion mocked, raising his hands. A put down, gee whiz, that's bad. I don't know about you guys, Karen said, but I'm going to write. I can't believe this, Bastion sighed. Jessica sat at her desk, arms folded. After a minute, she snapped open her binder and pulled out a blank piece of paper. The minute Rachel closed her eyes, she got a picture of Tommy Feathers, the way he used to grin at her whenever she glanced his way. She didn't have to wonder how Tommy would have voted. He would have voted with the majority because Tommy wanted people to like him. Tommy wasn't a very good writer, but he liked to write. At the beginning of writing time, he would often lean over to Rachel and whisper, I'm going to write a story for you. He hummed loudly while he worked, and after about 10 minutes, he'd pass his paper over to you. That's for you, Rachel. He gave her dozens of stories like this. Every day, she threw them away. She hadn't kept a single one. She tried not to think about that now. She tried hard to put Tommy's face and voice out of her mind. Around her, Rachel could see other kids stretching and fidgeting as they started to write. She took out her favorite pen, opened to a blank piece of notebook paper, and tried to clear her head. Writing words is like flying, Rachel thought. Words aren't solid. Words are lighter than air. But even so, 
they can sometimes give you a lift. I want you to think about that last paragraph when she's talking about getting started on her writing. She says, writing words is like flying. Words aren't solid. Words are lighter than air, but even though they can sometimes give you a lift. The author's using figurative language, so I want you to tell me what type of figurative language writing words is like flying would be. And then part two, I want you to tell me what the author means by that. What do you think Rachel means when she's thinking that? 